YouTube, Joe here. So, drinking the second runnings uh, stout we did. I guess I reclassified this as a, uh, a smooth brown. Um, if you didn't see that review, check it out. Uh, but no, this is not what this uh, video is about, actually. Got a Brewer's Best kit here. Um, and I'm not sure if, uh, if you guys are familiar with this type of kit, but this is the uh, the Brewer's Best line are the kits that I carry in the store at BIY Homebrew Supply in Marion. And um, this is actually one of their seasonal brews. It's been sitting on the shelf for a, a month or two now. Um, well, actually, probably, probably a little bit longer than that, actually. So I saw it and I was like, you know, I want to get that off the shelf. I want to brew it myself, actually, because I like the ingredients on this. It's actually their Hopnog 2012 recipe, um, which... Uh, once I tell you the ingredient list here, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, really? Okay. So I'm gonna zoom the camera in so you can see once we open this. I want to show you what's included in a Brewer's Best Kit, just in case you were curious about, about their line. I think they're some of the best kits out there myself, so I'm uh, very excited to show you one finally here on YouTube. So, take a closer look. Okay, so Hopnog 2012, there it is, IBUs 46 plus, original gravity 1058 to 1062, ABV 5.5 to 6%, uh, intermediate brewing difficulty. That cracks me up when I see the brewing difficulty level because almost all of them are easy. If they're intermediate, that means they have more hop additions or they're a lager, so they need to cold ferment. So that cracks me up. But here we go. Oh, one thing I completely forgot about this. The Hopnog uh, line, they come with a hat. So I'm going to actually wear this when we brew it. It's actually really chilly outside. It's like 30 today. So this will be great. So let's see. We got that. Um, each Brewer's Best kit comes with a very, very good uh, set of directions. Typically two-sided uh, sheet here. Um, they'll list your ingredients, what should be in the, in the box, a glossary of what all these ingredients or you know things mean so when they say OG, SG, FG um, if you're unfamiliar or you're just getting into brewing these this uh, they've written this so that anyone can literally pick up a kit and get to brewing it that day um, and then they're gonna tell you any special notes before you even start as long as you read it you know from top to bottom and left to right you're gonna you're gonna be able to uh, make a really really good beer here so let's see in this one here 6.6 .6 pounds of liquid malt one pound of light dry malt four ounces carapils eight ounces caramel 40 two ounces of centennial hops one ounce of palisade hops and one ounce of nelson Salvin hops that's the one i was most interested in it's an australian hop that is uh it's known for a white wine characteristic i've never used it before so i'm very excited about this so, so, when you open this up here, um, they've started including these uh, sheets here that basically tell you when you get the Hop Union packs, they always come with typically an aroma and a flavor profile on the bag. Um, and for some folks, that is confusing because they don't read the instructions. <laughs> so like Centennial type here gives you your alpha, beta, the aroma characteristics, and then the typical beer styles used. Just because it gives you the aroma uh, profile doesn't mean that that's not, uh, you're not going to use it for the bittering or for flavoring. That's what you follow your handy dandy instructions for. Down here in the brew day schedule, they'll tell you like, for example, so once you get it to boil, add one ounce of Centennial Hops, boil for 25 minutes. Add the other ounce of Centennial Hops, boil 15 minutes. Add the ounce of Palisade Hops, boil for 10 minutes. Add the Dry Malt and the Nelson Salvin Hops, boil for 10 minutes, and then you're done. So, if you read through the whole sheet and compare it with what you get in your kit, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, this one here, we'll grab those hops since I already had them. So, here's our... Two ounces of Centennial type. We've got Palisade and our Nelson Salvin. Oh, it's from New Zealand. My apologies, uh, New Zealanders. I, I mistook it. I thought this was an Australian hop. I must have mistook it for Galaxy, which are two that are often used together. So New Zealand Nelson Salvin. Um, bottle caps are included. I don't need these. Some chotch. Here's our grains. And the Brewer's Best uh, grains, they already are crushed. They come pre-crushed, so you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. 
Here's our grain bag. Priming sugar, which I'm just going to throw right at the tail end of the boil. And then our uh, Brees Golden Light. Looks like two Golden Lights, yep. And we've got our Golden Light Dry Malt Extract. Man, it's been a million years since I've used dry malt. <laughs> This will be fun. And let's see what else we got here. We got good old US05. Man, this is a good yeast. I love it. So this is all that's included in a uh, in a uh, Brewer's Best kit. You've got your grains. You've got your liquid and dry malt, priming sugar and bottle caps, hops, yeast, bag, instructions, um, information about what all is in your Brewer's Best kit here, a little bit of cross-promotion stuff they're telling you in this one here, what other ingredient recipe kits they have, as well as what's included in the equipment kits if you're unfamiliar with their setup. So it's really, really nice, you know, one-stop shop. So uh, without further ado, I actually have some water already heating up here. Um, this calls for uh, two and a half gallons uh, heated up. You get it in between 150 and 165, and then we will add our steeping grains for about 20 minutes. Um, so let's... Uh, Let's head out to the garage. I'm actually doing this one on the propane burner just because uh, I wanted to basically speed up my boil process. The electric uh, coil on the stove isn't, uh, it doesn't quite work as quick as I want it to. So I figured, heck, I got the propane burner. Let's just do it there. <laughs> so I'm going to throw all this in the box, carry it upstairs, and we'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so before we do anything, actually, we're going to get these, uh, this is the liquid malt extract cans, uh, or canisters, whatever, plastic jugs. <laughs> uh, got them in some really hot water to soften them up a bit, and uh, we're also going to take the crushed grains here and get them put into the muslin uh, hot bag here. Whoops, as I get it all soaked, so... Uh, we'll get that put in there, and then we will, uh, the water's actually already at temperature out in the garage on the propane burner, so I'm just going to get those grains put in there, and then we'll head out there. Okay, so we're at 163, which the instructions here call for in between 150 and 165, so I think we're good. I've got my uh, hop nog hat on, and we're ready to rock and roll. And you may notice I had to upgrade my, uh, my temp uh, thermometer here. My other one died. Oh, so sad. <laughs> I went to brew this yesterday and couldn't because I had no thermometer. So, okay, 163 it was. Just set that in there. We've got our grain bag here. We'll set that in. I'm going to use the uh, spoon here to make sure it's evenly wet. It's much. Very, very cool thing about this uh, thermometer here is that I can set uh, a timer, which I like a lot. So 20 minutes is what this recipe calls for here. And so we will be back in 20 minutes once this uh, has basically had time to steep and get all that good flavor and the dextrin from the carapules on there. So. We'll see you in 19 minutes and 41 seconds. Alrighty, we've reached time. Stop. Clear. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So basically what we're going to do now is take this here lid off. Uh, I'm actually going to set it up here. Uh, we're going to get the propane burner going and uh, pull these grains out and basically uh, bring the whole thing up to a boil. It is that time. So there we go. Pull this grain bag out here and pretty much just let it drain in. It's very exciting. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll just sit here and uh, basically let this drain out. You don't want to squeeze the bag that can extract some tannins out of there. Um, we're looking to pretty much just drain off what we can. And then we'll actually toss this bag. Um, and then once this comes up to a boil, we'll take our liquid malt extract that's sitting in the sink inside, um, get it mixed in. We'll obviously turn the heat off so that way it doesn't scorch. 
Um, that's one thing in the instructions here I don't really like is how they say to bring your wort to, to a gentle rolling boil, add only the 6.6 uh, pounds liquid malt extract to the boiling wort. Uh, I disagree with that. I think that you should always kill the heat uh, anytime you're adding a, a malt extract just to avoid any potential scorching or issues that could or, you know, arise from a heavy sugar sinking to the bottom of your, your boil kettle. So. Alrighty, so we're going to kill the heat. Going to pop. Yep, there we go. And I've got my hot liquid malt extracts here. We're going to get them popped open here. They have the foil lid, so not too hard to get off there. Get our spoon ready. Okay, here we go, number one. You want to add this while stirring, and again, I always recommend you turn the heat off because it's going to sink right to the bottom, and if you've got a lot of heat going on, it's going to uh, scorch. Okay, while that's moving, I'm going to go ahead and scoop out as much of the extract as I can from the canister here. You can even hear it hitting the bottom of just the, hear that little simmer? There's no heat on right now, so it's, that would be some malt extract hitting the bottom. Trying to avoid any scorching, obviously. adding some of the hot work here to the uh, canister. You can use hot water for this if you want. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid back on and shake the hell out of it and uh, we're going to get as much of that malt out of there as we can. <laughs> Good old water pressure and heat and steam. There we go. Add that in, and you can see, pretty damn clean. I'll take it. So now we're going to get our uh, next tin of it here popped open. Whoops, the foil on this one did not want to cooperate. <laughs> Gives you a good opportunity to taste test it though. Okay, I'm gonna get the work moving again. And there we go. And there we go. Lady back on that bad boy. And we're basically just gonna stir for a few minutes here, make sure it gets completely incorporated before we uh, put the heat back on and bring it back up to a boil. Then we'll start adding uh, all the hop additions for this, uh, this recipe, so. Okay, so this is pretty much mixed in. Now it's time to put the heat back on. My Florida lighter. <laughs> So now the matter, uh, the uh, the matter to watch out for here is uh, basically the boil over potential. It's going to be pretty high. Uh, this is a five gallon pot. I've got it filled to at least four gallons here. Um, so just basically, I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to keep my uh, thermometer here in it at all times to monitor where we're at once it hits 212. Uh, 
it basically can boil over at any time. So we are gonna keep an eye on that. You can actually see the hot break <laughs> when I blow the steam away. That swirling sort of colloidal mixture right there, that's gonna be uh, uh, the culprit. So uh, we're sitting at 183 right now. And uh, we're just going to keep an eye on this, and I'll see you guys once it comes time to do the, uh, the hops. Uh, I won't let you watch through the uh, hop break. It's going to foam. That's what's going to happen. And I'm going to turn the heat down, and then it's going to slow down, and then I'm going to turn the heat back up. It's going to foam again, and back and forth until we have a nice rolling boil. So we'll see you then. Alrighty, so I think we're past the hot break. It's a pretty vigorous boil. I think I'm going to turn it down just a tad. <laughs> You want a good boil, it's going to eliminate any DMS you've got going on. Uh, but at the same rate, you don't want it too vigorous because you can caramelize, especially with the extract brew, you can caramelize your uh, extract. Um, and then you can also just uh, basically boil out too much water. You know, water beyond what is necessary to your uh, boil off equations. So, yeah, we're sitting at uh, 213 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, get the hops going here. So our first addition is an ounce of Centennial. Let's see here. I'm trying to keep an eye on everything and make sure that we're not uh, <laughs> having an issue. Oh man, that's so fresh. It smells awesome. Okay, so I'm going to keep that probe there. Still a lot of foam going on, so I'm going to add these slow, and I'm going to uh, keep my hand on the fire trigger. In fact, I'm going to turn it down. Here we go. One ounce of Centennial. Ooh, see what I mean? You knew it was coming. There we go. Okay. Add a little bit more heat here. Get that green sludge there incorporated, which it will. And just make sure we don't have any other foam issues. One ounce down. Mmm, smells awesome. Centennial's a freaking awesome hop. I'm surprised it's not uh, just in a ton of American uh, IPA style kits, but okay. So the instructions now call for boiling for 25 minutes. So we're going to set our handy dandy thermometer uh, uh, timer here <laughs> for 25 minutes. And away it goes. So now we will see you in 25 minutes when it's uh, time to add the next set. It looks like uh, the other ounce of Centennial. All right. We are at the 25 minute mark. So it is time to add our next edition of Centennial Ox here. Smells so good. Okay, hand on the gas trigger. Here we go. That's not too bad. Okay, so this edition calls for uh, 15 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and set our timer for, whoops, 15 minutes. And away it goes. So we'll see you in 15 when it's time to add the Palisade hops. All right, there we are. Clear that out. 
Okay, so now it's time to add, let's see here, our ounce of Palisade hops. Mm. And we'll boil that for 10 minutes, so I'll go ahead and set my timer for 10. Okay, and hand on the gas. Okay, get that 10 minutes started. Oh, this is smelling so nice. I've never even cracked open a pack of Nelson Salvin, so I'm very excited to smell that one here. So we'll see you guys in 10 minutes. Oh, that smells awesome. All right, Nelson Salvin, here we go. Add that in. And then it's also time to add our dry malt extract. Away it goes. Here we go. Knock off that extra. There we go. Got to get that incorporated. Oh, you know, we're also going to add the uh, that priming sugar because I don't I don't need it. Again, anytime you're adding malt or hops or anything like that, uh, boil overs can happen. Okay, here's the priming sugar. Okay. Gonna bring that back up to a uh, Boil here. Set it for ten. Away we go. I'm gonna keep an eye on this now to make sure this doesn't boil over, and uh, basically we'll wrap this up and start to cool it down. So we'll see you in a bit. Alrighty, there we go. Done with that. We will kill our heat here. It's gonna pop. There we go. <laughs> and uh, now what we're gonna do, it's time to get this whole thing chilled down. I'm actually going to do the uh, cold water and ice bath method in uh, the kitchen sink. So, yep, we're at 212 solid here. So maybe a little tricky getting it cooled down. But that's what the fun is. So I'm gonna put the lid on, and uh, I will see you guys inside. We'll see you in a bit. 
And we've got our pot in the cold water bath, so we're going to do a couple of these and then an ice water and then get it into the fermenter. So we will see you then. It's already actually dropped down to 191 and it's only been in there about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, not too long. So it's cooling down. We'll see you then. Holy crap, that sucker's full. Basically, you just move the hops off the screen so it can continue to drain. So I won't bore you guys with this. All right, so we got that strained out. Now it's time to add our water here, which I've got in my five gallon jug. Top it up to that five gallon mark. We'll splash it around a bit, get some oxygen in there. Oh my goodness. All right. So I'm going to stir that a bit, get that foam incorporated. I've got my sanitized spoon here. We'll get that stirred in and we will uh, take a gravity reading here in just a second. Alright, so we've got that uh, water mixed in now. It's time to take a hydrometer reading. Sanitized hydrometer and thief here. There's a lot of foam in there. We're sitting at, we're sitting at 1060, exactly. Perfect, 1060 it is. Get that put back in there. There's quite a bit of foam left, so I'm actually probably gonna knock the yeast in there a bit. Paper towel here. Check our temperature. Actually, I'm going to take my digital probe here. Alright, the temperature on this gauge is in the uh, bottom left hand. You can see we're sitting at 68 exactly. This is perfect. Alright, so we'll take that there. I'm just going to go ahead and take my sap ale yeast here. Sap ale US05. Sprinkle it in there. This should actually be pretty nice. It's um, kind of similar to Bry 97 from Danstar in that it, it does kind of accentuate a little bit of the hop character, but not so much that it's going to, uh, you know, cause any astringency issues or anything like that. The uh, Bry 97 is infamously so slow to start. US05 is typically a, uh, a powerhouse, so I'm just going to knock it here under the surface if I can. There's so much foam with four ounces of hops and five pounds, wait, no, 6.6, 7.6 pounds of uh, malt extract. It's going to, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, dextrin in here, so. All 
Alrighty. This one's actually going to work out pretty well because I ran out of airlocks and I only had my blow-off hose assembly, so that's exactly what we're going to use for this. Sanitized lid. Let's see, take that. Uh, right about there. And we're actually going to take this downstairs now and get that airlock put in with the blow off tube into a, uh, uh, a wine bottle full of sanitizer. So we'll see you in just a second. Okay, we've got our sanitized airlock and blow off assembly here. We'll go ahead and get that put in. And then get this put into our jug here of sanitizer. Doesn't need to go too much in there. There we go. Now it's just a matter of time uh, of waiting. So uh, uh, this should be perking away. I mean, USO5 is a pretty voracious yeast, so it's going to get going here, I'm guessing, in probably about 24 hours. And um, uh, like I said, it's sitting at 68 degrees exactly. So here on the cooler uh, basement floor, it should be just fine. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on it, obviously, over the next you know 12, 24 hours if I can. But uh, with the uh, uh, exception of uh, just keeping an eye on the temperature, this bad boy is going to rock. So we will see you guys here. Um, let's see, we get this going here. We'll see actually at the tasting. It's probably going to be, I'm going to give this one at least two weeks in the primary, and uh, then we'll go ahead and keg it as long as it's looking clear at that point. And, um, and then it's going to be uh, pretty much ready to drink. An IPA is better to drink at about the 60 to 90 day range. So uh, that's my exact plan with this one here. The, uh, uh, the second running stout is uh, going to be running low here in probably a couple weeks, so it's going to be perfect perfectly timed for this. And it'll be nice to have some. I've, I've gone really malty. This one's going to be much more hoppy, so it'll be a nice balance. So, Thanks as always for watching, guys. Cheers. We'll see you around. Thanks for watching. 17.